<laughs> that, that is what you call verbal I porridge. Mean, if you I like mean, that actually, <laughs> if you, I mean, actually, I don't know if that's what you call verbal porridge, but that's what you should call verbal porridge. Because, Mike, we're we're sitting around here going, we wonder what Saudis are staying at the Trump Hotel in in Washington D.C. Let's go through the records to figure out who from Qatar is. It's the United States Air Force. Like, we need to look at the United States Air Force and see how they are now directing, I mean, directing millions and millions of dollars uh, Trump's way for this airport that actually helps Donald Trump out, helps helps uh, his, his business out uh, to a tune of, of what? What did they say? $17, 17 million, million dollars in refueling? Yeah, that's tax payer yeah. Money. It's like Mike Pence decides to go to the other side of Ireland <laughs> yeah. uh, in a meeting and what take uh, 250 room nights. I, I I don't know if that's the exact number. I thought I read that somewhere. But piling again a ton of money into Donald Trump's properties. Yeah. I mean, it's a scam. It's the great American scam from Scotland to Ireland to Pennsylvania Avenue everywhere this guy touches and now it's the united states air force you know joe it doesn't get a whole lot of chatter on cable and occasionally there's an important news story like the one that you're just referring to in the times today and other papers but the level of corruption in this administration it's from day one has been epidemic epidemic gene and you know we do cover it but you just wonder does it resonate out there because it's a non-going affair there's stories about who stayed at the hotel on pennsylvania avenue and now this incredibly the world's most expensive gas station in western <laughs> scotland and yet people people just you know they've come to accept it now i it, i am afraid that people may have become numb to it, but it, it has to continually be reported. This is totally outrageous. I mean, it just step back from it for a second. Um, if clearly, the United States government, uh, in in the form of the military, should not be doing business at at, a, at places owned by the president of the United States. That's a clear conflict of interest, a clear appearance of corruption, if not actual corruption, which it is. Uh, and, and so, it should never happen. And any other president, I think, it, it perhaps in our history, would have recognized that uh, this would not be happening under in any other administration. Yet it's it's routine. It's routine and it's increasing and it's every single day from the hotel to the airport to the golf resorts to Mar-a-Lago to every every way he can put money in his pocket. In every way that Donald Trump can put money in his pocket from being president, he's doing it. And uh, it, 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 that will be a big part of the story that's eventually written of this corrupt administration. Just the the level of blatant in your face out in the open corruption that for some reason is being tolerated yep and you know elise jordan i i, I don't know that this is going unnoticed by americans uh, I, I i i've been saying all along that too many people were shocked by what donald trump did in 2016 so they assume he's going to do the same thing in 2020 and shock them I'm not so sure of that. Since that racist rally, where those racist chants have sent her back, started up, and we saw an uptick in uh, some of his uh, more egregious behavior, uh, his poll numbers have gone down. A majority of Americans now say they consider him a racist. We've had one story after another about how he's enriching himself. And a new uh, ABC News Washington Post poll just broke, uh, showing that his approval rating dropped from 44 percent down to 38 percent. So it's sitting now at 38 percent. It has been, we talked about this last week, a cruel, cruel mm -hmm. political summer for Donald Trump. And the most remarkable thing, and I, I, I do talk to Trump supporters a good bit, uh, what infuriates them and what infuriates people uh, close to him in the White House is so much of these scars are self-inflicted. He can't get out of his own way. Joe, I don't think that Donald Trump understands that his 
For now, Republican allies on the Hill actually really don't like him. He has been their blunt instrument, their means to an end, and they have tolerated him as he's doing things that go along with what they want and while the economy is strong. And after this summer of racist ranting, of, you know, just cheerleading a recession practically by his own Twitter handle, and so voters are able to directly relate dips in the market to what Donald Donald Trump is saying and doing on Twitter. This has not been a good summer for him. And so while 38% of people might be okay with the racism, with the tanking of the economy by casual tweet, I think he really did a lot of damage to himself this summer. And then further stories of corruption, whether it's the Trump Hotel in Washington to Scotland, that does not do anything to help Donald Trump's political fortunes. Absolutely not. Not at all. And again, Willie, sitting at 38 percent this morning, uh, down from 44 percent at the beginning of the summer. And I just want to follow up with what Elise said. Uh, I, I spoke to a Republican insider last night, very, one of the most powerful that I know, that has quietly uh, remained in the background uh, so their firm could still get business in this age of, of Trump Republicanism. And he told me exactly what he said. He said, what Donald Trump doesn't realize is he is so despised on Capitol Hill. He's so despised by Republican governors across the country. He's so despised by members of the House personally that it's only a matter of time. And this was last night before these numbers came out, that they start planning ahead in for post-Trump Washington. And pretty soon, they're not going to take the slings and arrows for this guy uh, because it's proving to be a losing proposition. And we hear all the same things behind the scenes. We hear all the same things off the record from Republicans and others. But we don't hear it in public. We don't hear it on the record. We right. still don't see Republicans in the Senate or many in the House who are willing to step out and say the president was wrong here when he led those chants. The president was wrong to manipulate a weather map, for God's sake. And this question about the hotel and everything else gets to the question of draining the swamp. That was one of the central promises of this campaign. And boy, has it been the opposite of draining the swamp, filling the newspapers with stories like the one we see today, filling his cabinet with people like Wilbur Ross, who, according to the New York Times, I know we'll get to that in just a minute, ordered the NOAA to come out against the National Weather Service. This is not draining the swamp. These are people the president knows running our country and not doing a very good job of it. Maybe they need to drain, since we're talking about Scotland and Ireland, maybe they need to drain the moat <laughs> of the Trump goo that is filling up That's by the dynasty. moment. That's a dynasty. Listen, you would think that these moves over this, the, the, the uh, actions that this president has taken that we're talking about, it's the kind of thing that would make Republicans, some of them at least, want to vote for an alternative. The Democrats mm. either need to give us one, a really, a really good one that some Republicans on the fence would vote for, or maybe the Republicans will come up with.